Hi, this afternoon, some basics. Now, what we're going to do is the very basics of processing raw images. Now, most, mm. most cameras, most certainly most iPhones and most other um, smartphones will take raw photos these days. If yours doesn't, you might need to upgrade the operating system or something. But it's very handy if you miss processing your film in camera and once you've got it back into the studio well you can then process it there just what we want so let's get to it so hi guys let's have another look at an affinity photo version 2 basic tool now if you're into photography you'll use this one a lot i'm sure because it enables you to take raw photographs now there are some apps on the iphone at the various iPhone levels, that will take raw photos. Not all of them, and certainly not the earlier models, but the later model iPhones do take raw photos. The advantage of a raw photo being that you get every single detail in light, shade, shadows. Think of a raw photo as the old negatives that you used to get, and from those you could develop a photograph and adjust it in the in larger or in the developing process to suit your needs, which is great for magazine work or photo shoots or models. You can get reflections, you can um, add tones, you can brighten, darken, shade, you can do all sorts of things from the original photograph. Now you can see in the top left hand corner here, I've opened this up in uh, Apple Photo. And you can see in the left hand corner there, it says RAW. It's a raw image. Now, to get it into Affinity Photo, press the little up arrow in the box there. And I've got it ticked. It's the only one I want open. There's a couple of others there, but it's the only one I want open. Now, go down and open in Photo. That's the one I want. Slowly opens up, and there it is. Now, it comes up in Affinity Photo version 2. And it's a raw file. It tells you that in the top left hand side. You'll see there are no layers. There's nothing there except the adjustments for the raw file itself. There's a couple of things on the left hand side here. Every time I touch it, it expands the thing, so I won't touch it. Maybe I can turn that off. No, I can't at this stage. That's mm, kind of fixed. But that's all right. We don't need those. You can see down the left-hand side, there's various tools for brushing um, and doing things. But we're not worried about that at the moment. When it comes up like that and you've got raw at the top, you've got pixel layer, raw layer embedded. These are the modes that you can develop it to. So let's develop it to a pixel layer. Now, we you, obviously, if you touch the, the little tick box that's there, that will develop it. If you press the X, it will go back to um, Affinity Photo version 2. And this is on the iPad, remember? That's why it may look different. Now, the first thing we want, and the only one we want for this exercise, is that left-hand one. That's the basic um, development. Now, the exposure at the moment is zero. You can see it here. 0 0.7, I just nudged it up a bit. Let's bring the exposure up to 85, 92, 95. Let's bring it up to a nice round one. There we go. Now that's brought the exposure up. You can see some of the lights inside the building more clearly now. Some of the shade in the, um, some of the shadows down there. Let's see if we can bring those up. The black point. See, that make, black point makes it darker, which is not really what we want. If we're trying to bring up those, what's in those shadows, we can set the black point to about minus three. Be careful with brightness, because brightness can cause your sky to be a little overwhelmed. So I'll just take that up to 1%. Enhance. Enhance the contrast. We could add a bit of contrast to it. 10% contrast, that's not too bad. Let me 
reduce that so we can see the whole image. You'll notice the sky is quite grey in that, but we'll come back to that. There's 8 for clarity. That sharpened it up a little bit. Saturation is set to 0. Do we want to saturate it? No. Of course, you can, as you're moving that, you see, saturation's not having a big effect on that. I'll leave that at zero for the moment. Sorry. Let's scroll that up. Now, the white balance I've turned on. The temperature, that's quite a cold looking image, that. Now it's a little warmer. You don't want it too much. 7722 Kelvin, you can see there. See if you can bring it right up till it's almost sepia tone. Or you can take it right down so it's a snowy day. But we had it at 7722. Okay? That's what we want. The tint, sort of a greeny colour. That looks a bit more like the building because glass has a greenish tint to it, doesn't it? And that's a very glassy building. That, that building is all glass. That's a bit too much. Minus eight. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say because the sky is actually interfering with that. I might leave that at minus eight. Oh. Okay, that's why it won't move up any higher, because I'm at the bottom of the scroll bar anyway. Shadows, do I want to bring those up? So you can turn that off completely. So you can lighten the shadow areas quite considerably. You can see clearly under that building there. 41%. Let's make that a nice round number of... 40%. I like round numbers. And the highlights forty percent as well. Now that image is looking a lot better. And all we've got left to modify with that one really is the sky. And we'll do that in a moment. You can see there's nothing left to do there now. And that's all we need. Let's just develop that. And there it is. And there's your image there. And it's developed. You can see, you know it's developed because the raw file thing has gone away the develop persona so we'll go back to here and we'll save it as developed image put that in affinity photo iCloud drive And move it to there. Why that's called move and not save, I don't know. But I guess there's a good reason for it. Now, that's not a bad image at all, really. Now, just to add some of the other skills that we've picked up along the way, you can see that I've selected, I've used the Smart Selection Brush to select that whole sky area. We're going to put a different sky in there. So just go back to the Move tool. Leave the selection in there. We can go to the ed editor up the top and select cut. And there we go. 
the background or the sky if you like is completely gone now to get rid of the crawling ants we just go to that option there and deselect now the crawling ants are gone there's our image there now all we've got to do is look for in the stock studio um, let's see do we want a dark sky or a bright sky Let's try something different. If I spell it correctly. Sunset. Search. Now we're looking for something that that building will fit in with. That may not be a sunset, but it will do. No, it won't. It's, I didn't realise I'd had somebody in it. What we want is just the sunset. There we go. There we go. Now there's a sunset. You can't deny it. Now we've got to make that bigger. And as we know now, we've got it selected. Select the center point as the anchor. Set the chain on. Now just scroll up there. We can put that over to one side so that it shows from behind the building. We can change that in a moment because all we've got to do now is go back to the layers and drag that layer there down below. Let it go drag it down below the building now there's the building disappearing up into the sky with some birds around it and a sunset behind it isn't that awesome got rid of the plain old sky and that's really all there is to it let's not make this tutorial any longer than that is thank you for watching